level that out. And check the bottom as well. I'm just going to say plumb it with my Same again at the bottom. Top. So a slight adjustment just to straighten it out. Okay. And then just check it with the level again. So front and back. You just eye in, mate. It's quicker to just eye it in. Sure it's level. And then just check against the window to make sure it looks about right against the window. Well, I've done that first, bit. Alex. Gap here, there. A little bit of a bigger gap at the top, so just pull that over and just check that. Looks like the window is actually. Yeah, the window, unfortunately, is actually ever so slightly out of level. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to match the window. You should have done that so in first floor, right pal. Saved just in a lot of time. Same principle is when you're setting rendering beads, uh, you want the gap around the window to look right, not necessarily that it's perfectly level. So then the last thing mm -hmm. that I like to do, you don't have to do this, but I quite like to do it, is just get some gear and just... Feed it in there. So this isn't necessary, but just to make sure that the vacuum reveal is really nice and firm. Now, if it have done, if it have, if it have put his dots on, dabs on, whatever they call, you know, whatever you want to call them, if it had put them on, how? I said in the first place, actually onto masonry or onto reveal, he won't be having to do this bit. Do you know what I mean? Because it, it, it had already pushed out. It had have pushed out, then you just go down that and just take excess off. Right, so. What we're going to do is we're going to repeat the same process on the other side. Okay, so these now are done. You can see here, um, possibly... In short, the distance here, the gap here between the top and the bottom is absolutely massive. Get that lot. There's probably a difference of about 15 or 20 mil at the bottom uh, than it is at the top. But the important thing is that the reveals are the same, so it's 220 millimetres all the way around. So all we're going to do now is we're actually going to stick, um, stick the board to those reveals. So although it might not necessarily be perfectly plumb, to the eye, it looks perfect because the reveals are the same all the way around. Yeah. Where should you do there's, a, there's a lot of plasterers who, um, there's some that, that well, majority will do that, and that's best practice to do, and that's how you should do it, and that's how I've always done it. But there's some plasterers who I know, and they, uh, they put the boards on first, and then they cut the reveals to the boards. Um, and you won't believe how far some walls are out. Some walls are just miles out. Uh, you know, there's, there's some bad brickies like, but um, some walls, if you do it like that, you know, make, make sure that distance is same all the way around. It can it can be like that. You know what I mean? If a, if a meter at the bottom. Now, I'm just going to crack on with a section of wall, and we'll show you how we stick wall, uh, boards on uh, to standard walls. Okay, so when it comes to doing a standard section of wall, uh, you've got the choice of either putting it on vertically or horizontally. Now, it happens uh, that this section of wall is just over 2.4 meters. Um, so to make my life easier, I'm actually just going to lay them uh, horizontally, but in reality, either is fine. Uh, <coughs> there isn't really much. I hope that's fucking SBR, what Brian's putting on wall. I hope it's not PVA. Mm. Much in it either way. But what is helpful to do is if you just get your tape measure and where it says 1200, just get a bit of um, plasterboard and then just score a line like so. So that's what we used to do. So we'd, we'd, <clears throat> we'd do it like a jigsaw puzzle. But <sighs> I wouldn't put boards on that way. We always stand them up, um, and reason is is because the reason why you stand them up is then you can lift them up to the ceiling, so stick them up to the ceiling, and then <clears throat> pack them. 
so that they're in place once you've got them up. Um, there's less chance of cracking at top. You don't want a gap up top. Um, I can't work out whether that there is a gap or whether it's just, whether that's wall plate. It looks like it looks like insulation, doesn't it? it? Looks like there's a gap there. I, mean, I might be wrong. It might it might be wall plate. Um, it don't look like timber. It looks like that loose in, uh, insulation. You know, rock wool. So you don't want to gap the idea. Because it's going to be flapping. So you're going to get... There's more chance of you getting cracking on that uh, wall ceiling angle. So we know that our board is going to go there. Now, the reason so what I'd do is... And, and th this, is, uh, this is another way of what we do. And it's the best way. So when we... <laughs> If we drew us line, so ours would be sort of down there where that joint is there. When we put us dabs on, or dots, we go across that line so that the next board that goes on is half and half. So when you set your board on, when you push your board against wall, it goes into half of the, all them dots all the way down as well as other dots that you've put on. And then your next board sits half on there and they'll sit level together. Done right. The reason why you want to do that is that you want the dabs to be as close to the top of the board as possible without it spewing over. The reason... No, you don't. You don't. You need to go half and half, else your board's going to be flapping and it's prone to cracking then because there's no supporting that little bit of board. And then when when you're skimming, you've got like a you've got like a hole at back. Now I know that it he filled that bit of board in that side at reveal, but is he going to do it with every board on there? You shouldn't you shouldn't be filling every board in like that unless you've got some stuff left. If it spews over, then it gets on to the outside of the board. Not only is it messy, uh, but it's also a little bit harder to get the tape to to stick. So try and keep it as clean as possible. Yeah, that's. That's a lame answer. That that's a lame answer. That put in put in comments. I mean, plasters. How do you do it? Do you do it like Alex has said? Up to the, I, I think Ben and Dewar have a feeling who who, um, who are plasters or who I know. I think they do it like that, but I'm not sure. So it's where you've been taught. Obviously, I've been taught correct way, top one percenter, and Alex has not. So. Um, I would never leave a board flapping. Now, when it comes to sticking the dabs, now there is technically a gold standard when it comes to sticking boards. Is there? I'll be judge of that, Alex. And that being is, supposedly for fire, you're supposed to do a solid perimeter all around the board. I don't think there's an awful lot in it, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, so we don't generally tend to do... They might have changed building regs, or they might have changed how the fitter plaster would. I mean, this might be um, British Gypsum's instruction of fitting a plasterboard. I've not heard of that. Now, I have heard of it around plug sockets. So around electrical sockets, you had to have a continuous... Um, run of drywall so you put your dots all the way around and that's what we always did um and i still do if no, i ain't done that for you i ain't done this for years but you'd put a, a continuous thing and that held that held it in place as well um when they were screwing you know fronts on as well you're not you're not going to get it plasterboard sinking in but i've not really heard of it on every single plasterboard now if it is, you know, a, a, um, an instruction from San Globin or British Gypsum, um, then it's so that they want you to use more of the <laughs> adhesive up, isn't it? Um, because, yeah, I don't know. They might want you to do a continuous, a continuous run where there's timber. 
So, you know, if, if it's near wall ceiling joint or wall floor joint, but we used to do them anyway because you need a you need a constant run along skirting for fixings. So, you know, so they can fix into it. And then we always used to do one knee at top so it weren't flapping. Which is, looks as though it's mine, though. Hiya, it's Damp Sam here. I've just come on just to tell you that dampsam.com is now up and running. We've got the Express Damp Proofing System course designed by me, run by me, done by me. You can buy that. We've got the ultimate guide to black mold and condensation. You can pay what you want for it. And we've also got three free eBooks. And also we've got a guide to basement conversions, the ultimate guide to damp proofing, and also the podcasting series you can get in contact with them and the YouTube membership. Enjoy it, rest of your film. Do a solid perimeter. Usually you'll end up using a bag for every single board if you do that. However, uh, if the builder insists on it, then by all means. Um, and if you're trying to build it to spec, then by all means as well. But there are a couple of things uh, that we would recommend. Just a caveat to that. He just mentioned the builder. If the builder um, says it's got to be done. There's no qualification builder, right? So there's, if somebody says, oh, I'm a builder, you've not been qualified as a fucking builder. There's no qualification as a builder. What tends to happen is you normally it's normally a trade. So you've either been a joiner, uh, electrician, or whatever, and you started building houses, and then you drag all the trades in. You get an architect, you get surveyors in, and, and you kind of organise all these trades, and, and, and then you can go up from there. There's no qualification that says fucking builder. Do you know what I mean? You don't, you don't go and do an NVQ builder. Do NVQ level two plastering, NVQ level two joinery, NVQ level two electric, plumbing, painting, builder. No, there's no qualification as builder. So uh, that's another bit bugbear when people say, oh, I'm a builder. Right, well, what qualifies you to be a builder? Have you got builder qualifications? No, rant over. <laughs> Recommend one of them being is that we do recommend doing a solid um, bead across the bottom, and the reason being is it makes it easier for the carpenters to yep. skirting because they've got a firm backing uh, to go to. Yeah, the other thing to also bear in mind as well is that on a new build, they have something called a pressure test on it, yep. but they do test the pressure of the house. Um, and if you don't have a solid bead, at least on the bottom, it does run the risk of it failing its pressure test because it really? sends, uh, simply loses pressure through behind the dab. So, really, how does it lose pressure if 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 you've not? Listen, I I always do a continuous bead, but it's it's like I say, it's for joiner. But how does it lose pressure? I'm I'm I'm. I'm trying to work out here. I think he's just fucking made this up. How does it lose pressure if you've not got, if you've got a continuous thing across bottom? So unless it's, unless you've gone right down to the floor, then, so is it going to go down to the floor and touch onto, onto chipboard floor in? And then that seals wall floor junction because if there's a gap because he's, he's going to be he's going to be packing his plasterboards up so there's a gap anyway I think he's just made that up kids I think yeah logically thinking no either either somebody's told him that that's that's definitely not a thing somebody's told him it and he's believed it it's been passed down through, you know, Ernie, who um, always learnt off, but that is definitely not a thing. Unless somebody can explain it to me in comments and show me, you know, where it says this, that's not a thing. He's made that up. That is something to take into consideration if you're doing new build work. Right um, but as a general. Uh, we recommend every 300 or so.
I don't understand why why he's not why not just put it on and cut it off. So just just like that. It's, it's a it's a it's a a wrist action, so you just put it and cut it off. It's it's kind of using it's using more gear up by pushing it and smearing it. So it's, so that, that that smeary bit that he's got is is wasting fucking adhesive. How, how we put it on is we just I'd just chop it off. So you, as soon as you get you can do it lightly and just chop it off. So you've just got dots on wall. Other ways, some people will get. Um, get Keller or Bucket Trowel and they'll put it in and then just bang it on wall so it just it's it's wall and that's supposed to be a, a more um, a better a, it gives you a, a better addition to the masonry I've seen plasters do it with, your, um, with, a, with an old trowel as well so you, you get your dab and the, the, the bang it on wall le- level so it's like a, a sharp bang um, and you'll see them bang 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 and that's a quicker, quicker way of doing it as well. But I, it, it seems to be smearing it on wall, and it, it's it's bugging me knowing that I, you know, if I were paying for stuff, there's a bit of waste here. But like I said, I, I can be a bit of a, a, a perfectionist, but I'm just, I'm just saying what I see. See what you say. Say what you see. That's me. Rhyme that. And what you're looking to try and do. It's a nice, decent lamp. Fucking hell, it's a stainless steel, yeah. Smear it on so you have That's nice not a stainless steel one, is it? <laughs> it's fucking old rust bucket. The board to stick <laughs> onto. A solid bead. What are you doing? Get it. Wow, oh, just smearing it. Oh, on the it. bottom? No, 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 no. No, no, no. no. Uh, He's not used notice, to doing this, is he? Uh, we're actually layering up uh, the packers with uh, three sheets of plasterboard. Now, normally, we just do two. Um, but this extension... This, is exten- this extension is it's annoying height where... Uh, two 2.4 meter boards is just ever so slightly too small. So it's too too small. So boards are too small to to go right. Hmm. And, and and I get that. I get that. You 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 uh, you've got your measurements in your head and um, yeah. So the, these these times where you would put it like that, so he's doing it so he can use a a full board. Doing it other way, he wouldn't have got a full board on. But um, I, I mean, it all depends on how how big scuttings are going to be. I mean, most scuttings nowadays are four inch, aren't they? They do do a three inch. Um, yeah, so it mean you're cutting a strip in. So yeah, you'd, you'd work it out in your head, which is which is best way to do it. So yeah, you can, these times when you would do it that way. So hopefully three packers is enough. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. All right. Well, hang on a minute. What the fuck's happening here? What the fuck? Why is why is the fucking tournum lifting a fucking board? What the fuck? Has he got fucking paper hands and paper shoulders? Why is it why is Tournum using a board? You get it middle, fucking lift the cunt up, drop it down back at pipes, job job done. Fucking two on a plaster board. Come on, plasterers. Am I being muscleist on this or not? Would you use two? Is it two? Fair enough. If there were, that listen, there's there's women plasters in there. So there's there's women plasters, um, apprentices, younguns. You, you probably wouldn't expect them to lift a, you know, a board up, and drop it in. Put a plasterer. I used to fucking put them up, one fucking hand, and and nail the cunts as well. Fucking bit of a dead man in corner. Get it up. 
put it in position, fuck in one hand, then get fucking things, but put it into the other hand, get it in place, fucking nailing them up, not screwing them up. Fucking hell. And I tell you what I have done at all. Acoustic boards. Fucking eight before acoustic board. Get one of them up. They are heavy. And to be doing that on on a on a little wall like that, fucking hell. Just lift the cunt up and just drop it down. Plasters these days, eh? With the paper fucking shoulders and the paper arms. Like I can't lift a fucking plaster board up. I want to know if he's got an injury. Now he might have an injury. Only, only, only time that I could excuse that, a plaster doing that, um, torn them, trying to get a fucking board in. It'd be like, yeah, at minute I've got a rotator cuff injury. So Alex might have a a rotator cuff injury. So it would, I'd, I'd probably struggle to lift it like that. But I'd get it that way. So I'd, I'd, I'd get my hand underneath it and fucking come, come at it from side. And I'd still do it on me one. What do you think? What do your plasters think? Put put it in comments. Tell me. Tell me. Should a plasterer be able to lift a fucking board like that and put it in position? Especially especially as it's going in like that. Or am I being a bit harsh on him? Do you know what I mean? Am I, am I being harsh? Let me know. Hiya. Damn Sam here. Did you know if you want to watch a full unedited version of this if you become a damn fan 2 99 which is as much as a an expensive cup of coffee up here you can watch a full unedited version of this nah let's get back watching this bit eh? see you in a bit what we're going to do is very carefully i'd be middle lifting it like this oh yeah he got a rotator cuff injury has he like so, you can see, that was our chalk climber, it's just fucking short on where the ball is. Yeah, I mean, I now, what we're going to do here, thing, we're just going to get our level and just gently uh, tap it in place. So what we can see now is, obviously we already put them dots, it's going to be flapping all across this edge here. So unless it fills that in, which there'd have been no need to, if it had gone across that joint, across that joint. Not too hard. So, yeah, so if you'd have gone across joints like that, because it's, it's definitely going to put next board on, nah, you know, it's... But, but even if even if you were doing it and they were coming back next day, you could still put it across that joint and then just run your trowel on to take it off so that, so you know, them dots are not going to set over neat. So you just run it so it's... And then you'd put them in, in next day. But it's doing it today, so you, you know, half and half, half and half, half and half, all the way down. And then next and just sits lovely on it. And it, and shit don't come through, cause cause you've already put your dot on you and, and you're going on top of it. Unless you're fucking sliding it up and down, and then it's coming over edge. But it's supposed to be an experienced plasterer, and now he's leaving a a, a flapping joint, which which. In theory, if if that extension settles, so they've put the footings in and that over time, it, wait, it might just settle slightly. He's going to get some crack in there. Notice I'm not banging the level. So I'm purposefully not knocking it all the way home at the moment. He was just being on about not fucking banging it with his level because he didn't want to damage it, and now he's kicking it. So if it were me, I'd, I'd, you know, if you've got your dots on a similar thickness all the way down, your wall's more or less level. We, you know, we're, we're thinking bricklayers, half decent. It might be out at the top a bit. So your dots all, all, all same thickness. Put your board on. And then get your next thing on. So next thing's not gonna it's because you've put your dots across that joint, next thing's not gonna sink in, it's not gonna drop in further than other board, because that's a fucker if it, that happens. Because if you've not if you've not done that before, um I think I think before I used to do it that way, before I got 
taught how to do it properly, sometimes you put it on and wood would slip behind one. <laughs> and then that is a fucker. Okay. So all I've done is I've just pushed that back so that I know the dabs are just starting to grip the board. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to stick uh, this section on first, uh, this, this board on next, and then we'll level both boards at the same time. Just make so again, I, I can tell that he's not done this, uh, or he doesn't do this very often, because any plasterer with his salt would have put dot stabs all over the wall. So you'd have done all wall, and then you can see where he's drawn his line. So you've gone half and half on all them, then you go all the way up sides, cross top, down bottom, and then evenly distributed in between. And then you put your first board on, sit there on, then get second and straight over it and put it on. You don't do it one board at a time. Um, you just put it, and, and he's mixed that massive bucket up of stuff. So that's just wasting time. No wonder he's fucking knocking bucket out to end the job. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's just too slow. You know what I mean? If you, if you just do a wall. Makes life a little bit easier. Okay, so um, all we've done is we've just put this uh, board on now. Now what we're actually going to do is we're going to level the side. Fucking rate gap at top. So. What he's going to be doing at the end is going to be filling that with drywall adhesive. Proper weak point there. I mean, he said that he'd not cut it strong. I mean, he's saying he's got three three boards there. That only looks like two. So he could easily have put another couple there. I don't know. He's, he's, he's just. I think he's got his measurements wrong. But we have in that gap, that's a weak spot. So even when even if you put scrim on there, it's it's got a bit of a weak spot on there. Now, what we're actually going to use first is we're going to use one of these, which is basically <coughs> uh, a box section. I think it's made by by Rafina. I think it's made by Rafina. It fucking is being made by Rafina because you're fucking advertising them that you're selling them on bottom of thing. I'm surprised you ain't got fucking Rafina underneath Alex fucking. Sutcliffe or whatever it is on, on his top. And the reason why these are really good is because they enable, enable you to really beat down hard on the boards without damaging your level. So what we're going to do is just... Just tap them in the first. See, I'd have, I'd have had it right up to the top of the board. Not. The boards to it's about that together. far down from the top. So if you just tap it with your hand. Just... <sighs> See, you, is it, uh, and this is, this is what I'm saying. So I'd have gone across joint. There'd be no need to fucking tap with hand because it because there's no drywall behind that joint all the way on, it's flapping. So it's like that. It's kind of, hang on, it's going like like that, like that. So, so there's because there's no behind it. There's 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 no a substance behind it. So if you'd have done, as I said earlier on, half and half, you know, like you get your fucking pizzas from Domino's, do it half and half on there. It just holds it in place. It holds it level with next with other with other board. And it's just standard. Every I've thought fucking every plaster did it like that, but you know we get like a novice like Alex doing schoolboy stuff like this, and it's having to tap it with his fucking hand and that, and it ain't gonna work because it basically it's flapping. Hmm. And 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 again, there's there's a there's a formula to this. So when 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 I used to do it. Um, because he's got boards other way around. What we'd do is we'd, we'd do when we stand if we're standing them up, we'd do scutting line first, all the way up, and then ceiling line, and then in corner, and across that way. Just just so it's you know it's it's flat that way, flat that way, and flat that way. And I know he's trying to get it, everything bang on level, but um, 
you put you put your level, put that bit. In fact, you can get these. We're, we're, we've got a couple of straight edges. We're level in. So it's got one up top and one up bottom. Um, these what he's got here. I've got three of these. So we've got, I've got that size. I've got next size up and I've got a, a three meter one. And they're for concreting. I used to have them for concreting, for tamping concrete down. Um, the thinner, thinner levels for um, for doing board work that we've got. So uh, and and any plasters out there will will back me up on this surely. Just push them together. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to check with the level. Not normally this easy to get right. I think what we're going to do is we're then going to check the horizontal. They should have done you that. You see, well you can't see on the camera, but there is a few dips here, so we're going to just knock them in. Yeah, it, 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 surprise, surprise, it went here with a fucking joint war. I dubbed that sound because that is extremely loud. Um, I was obviously having to hit extremely hard on the uh, block section to push that in, which is why you don't want to use the level because it is a short part way of the level. So I'm just going to check again. Now we have it. Uh, this section are all perfectly level, so what we're actually going to do now is we're going to skip over to the other side and we'll catch up once we've boarded that section. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to fitting the plasterboard above the limbs, there are various ways you can do it. Uh, probably the most common is just to cut uh, some timber uh, lengths below just to basically overset the board so it holds it up. <coughs> but there's a little trick. Uh, for those that are dabbing over thermites like what we've got here, what we've actually done is we did the reveals probably two or three hours ago now, and we've let them go off. And then what we've done is actually screwed uh, plasterboard uh, through the reveal into the thermalite, so it just has a little edge for it to sit on. So that's, we've got that's a good idea. sheet of board on up here. It's just got something to sit on so it doesn't fall down. One of the things I like to do as well is if I am doing a, a reveal um, and it's something that, 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 that you do unconsciously or consciously, not thinking about it. So I always try and get bound edge on outside so you don't put your bound edge to wind the frame i always put it on outside um that's just one of the things that i do and then the same as we do with the reveals what we want to do is just get a square and just offer it up just to make sure nice and tight, which this is. So you can see here, it's just this little bit of extra. See, what I'd have done as well, and, it's, and, and I know he ain't done it, because he's put his, again, he's put his dots actually on wall and not right up to, um, not right up to soffit plasterboard. So I'd have gone, I'd have put my dot actually on to board so so it was touching masonry and board it's sen all the way on and then when you put it in that means it's stuck to soffit board and it's also stuck to masonry and again that reduces any chance of it cracking as well but what he's done is put 
is put them away from board so that there is a little line what is not got any uh, adhesive there. So again, how I'll explain it is this for harder thinking. So when you, for, this is for plasterers. So when you're screwing boards to a ceiling into joists, if you miss, because this used to happen with, uh, when, you were, when we were nailing them and then it changed over to screws. But if you missed a, um, a joist and it went th sort of part way through the joist and it was stuck out, or if you if you missed it completely and you, you didn't take your screw out or you didn't take your um, clout nail out, then you skimmed your ceiling. And what happens is over time, it very, very... I mean, you won't be able to see it. It vibrates and it slightly vibrates. And then what that does over time, the, the you get what's called a popper. So it vibrates and vibrates and vibrates um, to do with different things, airborne sound, uh, impact sound. And the head of the screw where, where it plaster is just drops out. So then you just get this hole where screw is or clout nail. And that's what will happen on that joint because it's not, it's got no adhesive behind it. So, in theory, it will slightly vibrate with impact sound and airborne sound. And then you can get cracking across there. And when he's put his bead on, you can get cracking down side at bead. I'm not saying he's going to do, but there's a potential for that because there's no adhesive behind that, um, that joint. And this is what I was saying about joint on wall. It's it's basic stuff for plasters. You know what I mean. It, that that bit, that plasters should know, and it was one of the first things that I learned. That you know what I mean. You, you joint it to be supported. You don't leave it flappers. I mean, would would he leave it half over a? You know, it's say if he wore plasterboard in, would he go half of a plasterboard so that that end is flapping, and not you know this end's flapping. This ends in plasterboard, but it, it finishes off at plasterboard. No, but is 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 using that practice in his uh, his dry lining, um, and it's wrong when he's learning when he's trying to show other people because it's it, it like I said eleven point whatever eleven point three thousand views eleven point three thousand people gonna be doing it wrong practice or they'll probably be if the plasters that do it right uh, there'll be probably 11.3 thousand plasters screaming at screen saying you're doing it fucking wrong <laughs> alex the plasterboard is actually just holding the weight of the board so we and it's just little things what i'm trying to say i know i know it sounds as though i'm being picky but it's little things it's little things that take you from being an average plasterer to being a top 1% plasterer. It's just it's just little things. You know, fucking keeping your trowel clean, not having it all shitted up, keeping your whisk clean, keeping your buckets clean, not knocking them out. Do you know what I mean? So if if he's got aspirations of getting in that top 1%, which, you know, very few can get in there. Very few can get in there. Are you in there, Mr. Plasterer, watching this? Do you think you're in there? If so, put it in comments. Tell me why you think that you're in top 1%. Um, I were there. I were there for years. Me and Sid, my mate. Well, Sid got kicked out because he was a fucking dirty cunt. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> but we were both in there. When we worked together, I did all cleaning up. So, um, But uh, uh, listen, we you get older. Don't do as much plastering now. I'm out. I'm out at top one percent, but my principles are still there. I've left that for a younger generation. Is Alex in top one percent? Not yet. He needs a. Uh, he needs to uh, to learn a few more things. And like I said, he's probably only been doing it ten years, so he's got uh, probably another ten years. And if he changes some of the things that he does, he might be in there. He might have a chance of getting in there.
We can leave this to go off for a few hours and then we just unscrew it and take it out. Uh, it's just a handy little hack, as it were, when going over thermalite blocks. Uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. Let's say the alternative, you can either use extendable props or just lengths of timber, uh, just um, over sailing, so it's got something to see. I'll give you another tip and all. So <laughs> most plasters on site won't have a fucking, <laughs> won't have any uh, timber, will they? So, uh, or a fucking saw, most of them, not I'll ever saw. So get a strip of plasterboard, do you know what I mean? Cut it down middle, you know, till it's, you know, till it's like um, strong enough to, to take weight and use plasterboards. You know, if somebody else is buying plasterboards, use plasterboard. So uh, that, that's another tip rather than, you know, looking for timber. To sit on. Um, although, um, it, unlike the underside, which works on suction, because the board is naturally wanting to pull itself down, the suction won't have as good effect and you'll actually find it'll actually start to slide down. The other alternative is that you can, on the side here, you can cut these short yeah. and oversell it that way and so then you just put it in the middle. Um, but unfortunately, the builder who we're working for is just a tad short on the board, so we've got to be a little bit careful uh, with how much we use um, with the board. Hang on a minute. Fucking... So builders bought all gear, and he's, and he's a bit short with boards. I'm sure there must be a builders merchants around there. If if that that had been me, I'd have gone and bought some more fucking boards, and then charged builder. Do you know what I mean? He's making thousands off these adverts because every two minutes there's an advert. So you'd think he'd have enough, you know, to go and find a wicks and buy a fucking plasterboard. Oh, tight Harry there. Board, so sadly it wasn't. We couldn't do that today. He's fucking wringing his hands like, oh, you know, got to get the pick a pack of tattoo, boys. Fucking wringing his hands. Get to Builders Merchants, buy some more plasterboards, do fucking job right, Alex. Uh, just as a simple trick, uh, screw a bit of board uh, straight through the thermalite block just to hold it in place while it goes up. Okay, so if you have something like this in your house, it's really important to make sure that uh, this is nice uh, and square and it's even both sides. So here the house has been knocked through. Um, so we need to make sure that it marries up both sides. So uh, the way to do that is you want to measure the uh, furthest point. So it's at the bottom here and this size here, it's eight inches. So what we're gonna do is we've cut both sides. And then we're going to dab both sides of the beam first. So again, nice, generous amount. And then we're going to just level up both sides. Hang on a minute. Listen, I'm I'm no fucking Leslie Walsh memory man, but he said he was going to dab both sides first, and then he's only done one side. But like I was saying before, I'd have just put both dabs on both sides. You know what I mean? He's doing one at a time. He he seems to be wasting a lot of time doing this, and I know he's doing a video, but obviously he's not doing what he's saying because he's going. Dab both sides. Rewind it. I'm not fucking lying. Okay, so both sides of these uh, reveals have been 
squared up and they're both plumb. So what we're going to do is... So he's done it this side. So look, when he, when, he, when he did, if you remember earlier on when he was doing reveal and he put it onto actual board, then it was short both sides. So whichever side he put on, he stuck uh, onto window reveal, there were going to be a bit flapping. And this is what I'm saying about how we do it. So we do it a bit on wall and a bit on board, which holds it in place. And he's done it down there, but he's not explained it, has he? He's shown you where that's... N I want to say cowboy way. It's not it's not cowboy way, but it's it's shown you the way where board is not going to be supported all the way across. This way it will be, but he's not explaining it. He's not explaining it to these you know eleven thousand people. Um, I hope I'm doing a good job of pointing these things out. Okay. Actually going to. Dab the front of it, but use the bit which is quite a lot wider than we need. What? So what we're going to do is we're just going to stick it over the whole top of that. Like, see how it And then what we're going to do is we're going to let that go right off, and we'll cut that back. I, again, I don't understand why he's doing that. Why, why he's going to cut it back? I, I, I can, I can see that he. I, I don't understand either one. So if he's cut that board, same distance at top and same distance at bottom. Let's say thirty. Let's say thirty. Let's say three hundred. Yeah, three hundred mil. Thirty centimeters. Three hundred mil. For sake of argument, so it's it's three hundred mil all the way up. Fucking hell! Um, so it's three hundred mil all the way up, and then he's put it on there, and he's put it to one side. Why is he gonna Why is he gonna cut it back then? Because because then, if he cuts it back and it's 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 same distance all the way down as it is, and then now he's put it on, he's gonna cut it back because it's it's overshooting board it's going to be thinner on one side or is it or, or am I getting this wrong is it going to be is it overshot one side same distance all the way up yeah so I might be he might have just cut it wrong I think it, but you'd rather him be honest and say I've, I've cut this wrong Um. I mean what what you normally do is yeah you'd get surf form and you'd you know you'd make sure it were all shaved down right but for me if it's right distance all the way down just fill it out fill it out with some drywall and then put your put your beads on because it's still going to be the same distance isn't it so if he's got any rather than banging it out fucking book it next day use it up use it up on places fill them gaps in at top the massive oils <laughs> And then go over, um, go over joints. You know what I mean. Fill all joints in. Um, make sure you've got some drywall in there that's pushed into gaps. And I know reason why he ain't doing it is because he's saying fucking scrim won't stick to it. But I'd rather board be secure than be worrying about whether I can get fucking scrim on without mixing any stuff up. What do you think? Pretty good. So, we'll do then probably tomorrow. Let this pull in, and then we'll just run a, a knife from out to around the back of it just to square that up. So that is it for this video. It's just a very brief overview of how. Look, with hands. So it, it, it it's bugged me a bit that. I mean, when he got stuff in his hands, it was all right. But obviously, Alex, tell me why you're doing all this with your hands. You know what I mean? The joint camera thing. Find something better to do with your hands, you know what I mean? Put them on your hips or somewhere. Put them back of your fucking head or whatever. <laughs> you can uh, dot and dab the walls in your house so you can start turning uh, that wreck of a room into something that you...
can be proud of. Uh, but in the next video, we'll be looking at the final preparation that is required uh, just before you start plastering. So it'll be bonding out chases, killing the suction, setting beads, etc. So look out for the video, maybe give it a thumbs up to subscribe and possibly consider uh, turning on the notification bell so you are notified when that video uh, comes online. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks again. So I'll do my final thoughts. So, um, yeah, listen, the well, well made videos and he speaks, um, very succinctly is, uh, he's, he's got a good accent. He's got good camera presence. Brilliant. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot better than me. Um, mine is just fucking off, off a hip, uh, and, uh, a lot of pauses and um, ums and ahs on mine, but mine's a bit more down to earth. Alex a lot more polished, but like like I said, it is, his intentions are good. But if you're going to put videos up there, and if I if I if I'm watching them, I can see some stuff that's that's not right. So if I've got better tips, um, then this is why I do re reaction videos so I can point these things out and say this I'd do this this way, I'd do it that way. Just got a bit more experience than Alex. Um, if I'm wrong, Alex, I think you look like you've been doing it about 10 years. Between, probably around about 30, 36. It might be 12 years. But um, I, I might be wrong. Uh, but obviously, it's been shown different ways. Um, when I started, it, it, it were a bit different. And when people older than me started, they, they could probably you know pick uh, bones about about my plastering. So, there's, there's I mean, there's some good ones around here, good plasters who were doing solid plastering. That's how they started and then got into dry lining. Majority of people now, it's more dry lining and it'd be very rare that they're doing solid plastering unless it's just patching. So, um, I hope you've enjoyed it. So, if you, I mean, it's been a long one, hasn't it? <laughs> it's been a long one, so I hope I've uh, given you a bit to laugh at in between all, uh, all bits of plastering. But, uh, yeah, I... I, I know it's going to be a bit of marmite, this uh, video. You're either going to love it or hate it. Um, and that's what makes, you know, that's what makes uh, conversation, isn't it? Not everybody is going to agree. So I don't agree with some of his, his uh, methods. I agree with a lot. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up here and, uh, and semi-final goodbyes. And, Hopefully, I might, I might have a look at a few more of his uh, vids and just see if there's all else that uh, that we can comment on. I'll have a look what titles they are and see what is what is uh, what is trying <laughs> next. But um, but yeah, he's, he'll, he'll, he's, he's obviously making a bit of money doing it. Um, let me know what you think of my video. Uh, I know that uh, some people enjoy them and some people don't. Tell us what you like about it, what you don't like about it. That's Damp Sam signing off. Bye-bye now.